Line 26, A6, Part 1. Alien contact, Chibolton message, silicon DNA, Arcebo transmission while setting. There's the alien radio signal. Okay. <coughs> 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 Sorry. This was originally from February the 8th, 2013. And then I got to research the data. Research. Research was done April 20th, 2014. Yeah, I know, I can't type first thing in the morning. Okay, so this video is going to talk about numbers, labels, atomic numbers, hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, formulas, sugars, bases, nucleotides of DNA, double helix DNA, <coughs> height of human being, human population on Earth, solar system, Earth displaced towards human being, our Siebel telescope transmitting message, diameter, of telescope pictures glyphs translation binary version message decoded chemical formulas components dna molecule phosphate group dexyribose sugar organic basis thymine adine guanine cysteine height human being diameter <coughs> telescope wavelength messages 1700 gmt 16th of november 1974 Giant Arcebo radio telescope isotropic power output watts transmit mankind radio message intelligent creatures transmission 2.38 gigahertz Frank Drake Carl Sagan 1679 bits of information pictogram global cluster M13 24,000 light years away Arcebo beam 300,000 stars in the cluster round trip transit speed of light Communicative Civilizations and Keyword Research, Line 26, Well Study Data. Okay, so February 2013 was over a year ago. Quotes and diagrams from the blog. And we're looking at the well signal again here. It's all little numbers in it. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. I got it wrong. This is the Arcebo message in binary code. So I messed up. In that other video where it shows the Arcebo message in graphs and then in binary code, I gave you the wrong information. I apologize was transmitted in 1974 toward the Great Cluster in Hercules M13 from the 1,000-foot antenna at Arcebo. The message is decoded by breaking up the characters into 73 consecutive groups of 23 characters each and arranging the groups in sequence, one under the other, reading like right to left and then top to bottom. Oh, they read from right to left. Oh, okay. I didn't even realize that before. The result is a visual message, see below, that can be more easily interpreted by making each zero of binary code represent a white square and each one a black square. So this is what it looks like. So it shows, again, we're talking about the numbers, uh, our numbers, our atomic numbers, formulas for sugars and bases and nucleotides of data, number of nucleotides in our DNA. <coughs> we have a double helix in our DNA, and then it shows our he height of the human being. Oh, sorry. You guys can't see the whole thing. I apologize. I'm not doing very good, am I? Okay, so, and then the human population of Earth. Let's see how the little circles are. This is the sun, and then we're the third planet. Mm, there's Earth there, floating above everything. So it's this place towards a human being to show that that's where we live. Then the Arcebo Telescope Transmitting Message. I think it was amazing that they even came up with this concept. I'm like, kudos to them. They did a great job. So our SIBO message in pictures and accompanying translation shows the binary version of the message decoded. Each number that is used is marked with a label that indicates its start. When all the digits of a number cannot be fit into one line, the digits for which there is no room are written under the least significant digit. This message must be oriented in three different ways for all the numbers shown to be read. The chemical formulas are those for the components of the DNA molecule. Phosphate group, the dexy rod balls, good sugar, and the organic basis thymine, endine, guine, and cystine. Cytosine, sorry. Both the height of the human being and the diameter, diameter oh, of the telescope are given in units of the wavelength that is used to transmit the messages 13 to 6 centimeters. <coughs> At 1700 GMT on the 16th of November 1974, the giant Arcebo radio telescope equivalent isotropic power output 2 times of 10 to 13 watts 
was used to transmit mankind's first deliberate radio message for possible reception by other intelligent creatures. The transmission was made at 2.38 gigahertz by Frank Drake and Carl Sagan. It consisted of 1679 bits of information arranged in a 23 by 73 pictogram as shown in figure 244.9 which we just looked at. The simple message took 169 seconds to send. Hmm. So that would be divided by 60. <laughs> uh, I'm not even going to try to figure that one out. I'm not very good at math. Was aimed at the global cluster M13, which is 24,000 light years away. You think they would tell you how many minutes and then seconds instead of the seconds, you know? Anyways. At this distance, the Arcebal beam just covers the 300,000 stars in the cluster. So it only sent the message to 300,000 stars. Theoretically, we may receive a reply no sooner than 49,974 AD. That was totally wrong. We got a reply like th three days later after they sent out the signal, we got a crop signal. And then three years later, we actually got a binary coded wow signal, which was answering back, but nobody figured that one out until I did this data 2011. I figured out that they were trying to respond. So the round trip transit time at the speed of light. However, it is now reported that there are between 20 to 100 stars of the red giant and orange giant variety in the path between here and the M13, and that literally thousands of stars may have been fanned by the Arcebal beam while it was being tuned up to send the actual message. Communicative civilizations at any of these sites may have an earlier chance to intercept the message or at least parts of it. We may get an answer sooner than we expect, which we did. So that went to, um, I found that on www.xenology.info. So obviously they wrote this back in the 1970s, so that's kind of cool. And it's, you know, uh, data continues the next video. Huh. Oh, actually they wrote this, I don't know when they wrote this, but they obviously didn't realize that we did get an answer back, which is interesting, eh? Okay, thanks for watching.